Welcome to the Education Marketing Leader Podcast with Chris Raposo. If you're looking to dive into the latest industry insights, draw inspiration from education success stories, or just want to sharpen your marketing skills, you're in the right place. Here, we bring you a diverse range of voices from experts and leaders in the field, offering you a unique blend of professional development and practical strategies. Whether you want to understand your audience better, stay updated with the latest tech trends in marketing, or expand your professional network, we've got you covered. So while you're driving on your morning commute or winding down after a busy day, let's explore the dynamic world of education marketing together. What advice would you give a higher ed marketer who's just starting out or just focusing on the student journey and KPI tracking to improve their enrollment? One piece of advice. Yeah, I would say go through, like go through the process. Pretend you're a student, go through the process, get the, get the um, pamphlet in the mail, fill out the lead form, talk to admissions, not only that, but I always say, do it for your own institution and then do it for two others. Feel those different experiences. And then that, it's a huge, huge way to get a really good idea of what you do well and how you're differentiated. And then start asking questions. Why, why are we doing this? Why is this like this? Um, and then um, start to look the, at the data behind it. I think that's where it all kind of comes together. It's, it's just so much fun when you can do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Education Marketing Leader. Today, I have an education marketing leader as a guest who has 16 years of experience in the higher ed sphere. His name is Rustam Irani, and he is the principal consultant for marketing at RGI Consulting Group. Rustam, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So, Rustam, you're a fellow Gator. Go Gators, first of all. Go Gators. Yeah. So, that's right. so you got your you got an engineering degree from the University of Florida, and then you pivoted a little bit and you got your MBA with a concentration in marketing from Florida Atlantic University. And as I just mentioned, you worked for the last 16 years helping higher institutions with their marketing efforts. Just tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got into the higher ed industry and RGI consulting group. Sure, sure. Um yeah, it's it's an interesting story, and uh, you know I've got a um, I've got a daughter who just started uh, at college. She started at FSU, but we we won't talk about that too much here. Uh, but no, she's really loving it. And um, interestingly, like she's trying to decide what she's going to do for her major. And I said, look, look at your dad, right? I started in engineering, I did civil engineering, and now I'm doing marketing. Um, and so I think she can kind of relate to that. I said, don't worry, you don't have to have everything figured out right now. Um, but, you know, very quickly after I, I graduated, I started working, um, there was always something about, you know, just continuing my education that was important to me. And, um, you know, I was living at home with my parents still, and there was a great uh, program that somebody had mentioned to me, an MBA program right down the street from where I was living at FAU. And I said, let me do it. Now's the time. So I went back uh, to school full time. And then I also got another engineering job full time. So I was doing both. Um, but the real cool thing, the thing that really drew me in a, the marketing classes were, were really just exciting for me. I, I really enjoyed them. Um, and then B the CEO of the company, the engineering company at that time said, Hey, Rustam, we don't have a marketing plan. We don't have a website even right. Which an engineering company back in 2000, right. Probably didn't have a, a website. There weren't too many that had some of that stuff. So he, he basically said, Hey, you're learning all this stuff. Why don't you write us a marketing plan? Why don't you help us build a website, you know, find the right companies that can help us do this. And so this was all while I was in school. So I basically took the work I was reading in the textbooks and the case studies, and I was applying it to, uh, you know, to a, a business, a, a very viable, pretty good sized business, which was just, it was one of those things that really impacted me, not only for my career, but also for as a leader. Right. The fact that the CEO took, you know, the the initiative to give somebody who was in school learning this stuff, the opportunity to make an impact in the business and just test something and do it. Amazing. Right. 
amazing. That's stuck with me over the years. Um, so I stayed in engineering for, for a little while. Um, and, but I kind of followed the marketing management path. Um, and then I started a consultancy, uh, a little over 16, 17 years ago. And I met a gentleman while I was consulting that had a digital marketing agency. And then that's where I jumped into digital marketing pretty, pretty deep. And our largest client was in education. And so that's where I got into education. And then over the years, I've um, I've worked at a school, pretty large uh, school, national, um, you know, healthcare school, uh, eighteen thousand students, uh, pretty decent size operation. And I learned so much there, and so grateful for my time there. We just had so many things across marketing and admissions and so on that I was really grateful and blessed to be uh, a part of that. Um, and then uh, throughout the years, I've, I've stuck in in education. I also worked uh, at an OPM where we partnered with uh, actually uh, a number over 50 universities I've partnered with globally, um, you know, even in uh, the UK, uh, Australia, Mexico, Canada, all over. So just grateful, just blessed to have this experience and, and to be able to to. Um, to marketing and education. Yeah. I'm so grateful to be in this path. Absolutely. Same with me. I fell into education marketing as a, on the vendor side about a year ago. And I cannot tell you how lucky I feel to be here just because of the, the, the community is so collaborative. They want to help you out, you know, so everybody learns from each other. They don't keep their sure. secrets. They share them, you know, because all ships rise. Um, but there's something coming up called the demographic enrollment cliff, which will, um, you know, put a little bit of a strain, a little bit of a stress on marketing and enrollment for the years to come. And one thing that's very important is to optimize the student journey for people when they come to your website, when they hear about your institution to get to the final stage where they enroll in your institutions um, efficiently. So this is what we're going to talk about today because you're an expert in helping um, your clients understand how to optimize the student journey. But for some people who are not in higher ed or who are not too familiar with the student journey, can you help us understand the concept of the student journey in higher ed and why it's vital for higher ed institutions to understand it? Yeah, sure. Um, so really at the end of the day it's all about the experience um, from the moment that somebody who potentially might even be considering your school the experience they have with their first um you know either interaction with the brand or maybe it's even uh outside of online it could be even um something tangible where they have a cousin uh, or they have a relative that mentions, hey, uh, so-and-so just graduated from, from here, right? Um, that experience, that story, it starts at that first touch point. Um, and so from that first touch point, when that exposure happens to the school's brand and you know what that is and what that feels like, uh, and all the way through to when somebody starts class, right? Not only that, but when they're even in class, what are those experiences in class? I can tell you, my daughter, she loves FSU. Um, she's having a great time, great experience, but she does have one professor that may you know, be creating a little bit of a different experience for her. But overall, her experience is so great, it, it doesn't impact her image of the school right? Which is, which is really powerful. Um, all the way through retention, and then even when somebody graduates. Mm -hmm. Alumni are the most powerful brand ambassadors, right? For any, any company, let alone an institution, right? Which is even more powerful. So it's really that whole journey of when, you know, and I know you've had, um, I think the folks at Bravery Media you interviewed and, and creating that website experience, you know, creating all of that that's all a part of it, right? You want to have that optimal experience that speaks to, um, you know, who you are as a university, what you are, um, and and the why, right? Those are really critical elements. And so that kind of funnels all the way through each and every touch point with your emails, with your marketing messaging, with when you speak with somebody in admissions, what's that interaction like? When you go to campus, what's that feel like? Is that consistent? 
Um, and so that's really the student journey. That's really kind of all of those touch points that make that full experience. Um, and there's tons of ways to make sure you're optimizing every single one of those touch points and making sure you're, you're finding those types of students that are a great fit for your institution, right? And not everybody is, and that's okay. That's right. Um, so there's so many touch points uh, in the student journey. What are some of the common challenges institutions face when trying to map the student journey and how they can how can they overcome some of the obstacles? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I see a lot of times is, you know, institutions try to fit like a one size fits all kind of journey, right? Um, they say, well, this is this is our landing page, or this is the way the website needs to look. We need to cut, have them come through this funnel. This is where they engage. This is the emails they get. And then um, when they get to admissions, you know, this is kind of the conversations that admissions is happening as happening. And so when you have that kind of system where you're just looking at it in one way, I think a lot of institutions at times can get it to where they're not creating that personalized experience. Not every student um, is interested in the fact that you have the number one psychology program in the U.S. if they're not a psychology student, right? But if you're sending that in your email messaging, when you're reaching back out to a prospective student, does that make any sense? I mean, that's great that you have the number one psychology program, but I'm interested in engineering, right? How is that relevant to me? So I think um, a big opportunity that I see a lot of times when we work with an institution is we go in there and we look at, okay, what is the messaging that's going out? What is that experience? Is it similar for everybody? Or do we have different experiences and different journeys based on somebody who's interested in education, somebody who's interested in business, somebody who's interested in psychology, Right. How are we crafting these? The overall brand can still have the same experience, right? But it's at that level when the reality is I was looking for a great engineering school, right? Uh, University of Florida happened to be one. Um, and I'm glad uh, it was one, but I was looking at UCF. I was looking at other schools that are out there that have good, solid engineering programs. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's one thing that is definitely a, a huge uh, opportunity for institutions is to really just understand those different um, students, those different profiles, even personas at some level, and to create those experiences and those journeys that are that speak to them, you know, yeah. at that level. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's so important to segment your audience. And I understand it is very, very difficult, especially if you have a if you're short staffed, you know, to to put that to put that effort in there because it takes such a long time. It's so yeah. easy to pump out a a, 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 a a mail piece and just send it to everyone. Um, talking about College of Engineering, I actually received a donation request letter or postcard from uh, the U University of Florida a couple of months ago, and it was about this this uh, traditional age student talking about her time walk in the halls of Herbert Wertheim College of Engineering at the University oh, yeah. of Florida, right? And thanking the, thanking the donors and the alumni for their donations so she, that she could have a great experience. But I looked at this and I thought it was a great story, but I couldn't resonate with it because I went to uh, University of Florida online and I went to the communication school. So there wasn't a connection for me there, right? So- sure. So it's the thing they gave me, they, they spend the money on the mail piece and they probably send it to everyone, uh, whether or not they went to engineering school or not. So I, I felt like that was a lost opportunity. Of course, come the annual giving day, I'll, I'll, I'll give some money to the university just because of my appreciation for the time that I had there. But yeah. anything above and beyond, like something like that, when I got the mail piece during the year, I was like, no, nah, you know, didn't connect with me. So that's the Perfect that's example. The, yeah, that's the importance of personalization there, for sure. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. What is the most critical stage of a student journey in higher education? Is it is it to have the, the perfect website or is it something else? Yeah, I, th I think it's just consistency in that experience. And I'll give you a perfect example. And, and you know, I'm really grateful. Uh, I've, you know, I've worked at, at schools and, and so on, but to go through the experience with my daughter, 
um, she received, I would say at least, and I kept every one of them, at least 60 or 70 brochures and pamphlets from universities that were, you know, interested, obviously, in, in having her apply. And I'll tell you, there was one that stood out that just um, the consistency in the messaging. So it was one of her top three uh, options. It was Tulane University in New Orleans. But I'll tell you what, from the first letter she received from Tulane to the um, to the uh, postcards that she received, she received uh, everything was very consistent about who they are. They're all about community. They're all about making an impact in the community, not only locally, but globally. Right. And their messaging and their pamphlets and all of their stuff was so consistent that even in the letter, like the acceptance letters that they sent out, there was that that resonated within there. It was just so powerful um, and so consistent throughout that entire process. And I think like that consistency is huge because once you bring in any level of inconsistency, then you're just like any other school, right? Then it's like, how is University of Florida different from Florida State University, right? Or how is Tulane different from Emory University or anywhere else if, if you're not providing that consistency? Even when we went to visit the campus, Chris, they had the New Orleans Jazz Band there. I mean, we went into this old auditorium that just made you feel, right? It made you feel like you were at Tulane University. It was just so powerful. Um, even the people that we we met, um, and then not only that, but the way they broke us out into groups based on what her potential major was um, and those experiences and talking to those students, that's impactful as well, right? Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, we had, we were actually engaging with the entire time, the correct, you know, type of students and so on to give her that full experience. And it was just powerful. She obviously didn't end up uh, attending Tulane. Um, she went to FSU, which she had an incredible experience there as well. Uh, it's a, obviously a much larger institution, but they created an incredible um, experience as well. And they still do, uh, which is pretty cool. And they involve parents. That's yeah. the other thing is yeah. it's not just a student. You've got to like, you've got to expand that beyond like, we still get emails from Florida State University from the parents side that is just so engaging. Um, and, and we love that, right? And so it's not just a student, you've got to involve their ecosystem as well. And I just wanted to throw that in there, Chris, because I think that's important too. It is very important to get the yeah. parents on board because most of the time yeah. they are the ones who finance that or at least sign off on it, you know? Correct. And yeah. I like I love what you said with the consistency because that consistency builds familiarity and that familiarity builds trust. Uh, but I also wanted to say congratulations to you for getting that um, in-state tuition locked in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Florida does a great job, by the way. Florida is a fantastic state for that. Um, we, we definitely have a lot of great programs uh, here. So really yeah. grateful for that. But in terms of technology, what tools or platforms do you recommend for tracking and analyzing a student journey and KPIs effectively? Yeah, that that's a great question. I think you know, the core platforms are still the best, Google Analytics, right? Just take a little time to set up Google Analytics properly. Um, and I know that's a little difficult at times because then you've got to go through the IT department and you've got to kind of, you know, as an institution, you've got all these different departments and you've got to kind of, you know, break a little bit of those silos to, to get in there. But I'll tell you, once you do that and once you set those things up, um, there are a number of great free tools to really track and understand who's engaging with our site, where are they going on our site, what are they filling out, when they fill that out, what's happening after the fact. I mean, um, again, I, I think that's probably the number one tool, I would say, if, if marketing teams are not using it, like Google Analytics is just, is, is just key. Um, there's a ton of other tools that are out there as well. I think there are a lot of tools within the CRM platforms as well that connect directly to if if a school is running digital campaigns, they connect directly to AdWords or directly to Meta or LinkedIn and so on. Um, and that's important because then you can actually take student level data and information and get smarter about 
your ad campaigns, right? Um, and so that that sort of data can be really helpful as well. Um, but yeah, typically those are those are kind of the that's that's the number one I would say is is set all that up. And then there's a ton of other kind of analytics tools. If if a school is using uh, is a Microsoft shop, you know Microsoft BI is a great um, business intelligence tool. There's so much great uh, reporting and dashboard development that can be done in there um, to give insights and and so on. So, um, but I would say there is a ton of great free tools out there, um, and I think those are just fantastic. And then on the research side, there's SEM Rush. There's Ahrefs from an SEO perspective. There's spy. There's there's a ton of other ones on that side as well, just to kind of see um, what competitors are doing, what uh, other schools are doing, you know, and and so on. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, we use SEM Rush as well. So it's it's really good to just see the overall health of your website. You know, you you don't, exactly. you don't know if you don't have that tool uh, uh, logging into it. So definitely recommend. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestions there on the free tools yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So there's a lot going on with AI right now and artificial intelligence. How do you see the role of the student journey mapping evolving with the increasing trends of online and hybrid education models? Yeah, that's a great question. And I know there's a lot of, lot of conversations around AI across multiple industries, obviously, including education. I actually just got off a call this morning with uh one of my friends who runs a technology business and he's doing a lot of work in AI. And so we always have our weekly AI touch bases to hear about some of the projects he's working on and so on. I think, you know, from my perspective, the fundamentals are not going to change. Um, the journey is the journey, right? And you want to create these experiences for the students. What I believe AI will continue to do is it'll continue to create potential efficiencies in workflow, right? Um, what people are doing, how they're doing it. I think there's incredible opportunity from a research perspective. I've used it a ton on the research side. I think um, there's also a lot of great utilizes, utilization and, and opportunities from just uh, not only taking notes, but now taking those notes and creating action items from them and then finding resources to execute on that. I think there's a lot of opportunities there. From a curriculum standpoint, I, I haven't really dug in there too much. I could see how there's probably ways it could help um, speed up and also um, you know, be utilized for potential formatting for um, research, or, you know, what's what's most important? I think the other uh, last piece I would say that to me is most exciting with AI is data. Mm. So how can AI research, review, and utilize data? So I've already started to kind of test this where I put some data sets into uh, ChatGPT4 and I ask it to do things. I ask it to, to analyze certain things. I ask it to look of this person who came through Google how long did it take them to enroll in this psychology program? And how much longer was that than the other programs? Or was it shorter? And there's a lot of these types of things that AI will be able to and, and is able to and will continue to be able to help um, you know, people uh, who are looking at this stuff and the data and the, on the education side just become smarter become smarter about what's happening uh, across the student journey, what's happening across the institution, um, and then really just improve those experiences. I was at the AMA Higher Ed Symposium uh, a yeah. month ago, and I attended a roundtable discussion for artificial intelligence for higher ed. And one of the gentlemen in there told us that he created 50 or different program pages in a day using jet gpt you know just got the got the initial draft done and then you send it over to the different departments to edit it down and see what's um you know what's relevant what's not but 50 program pages in a day like that's unheard of so that really helps with that efficiency uh, and getting those programs out there especially the new ones and then put them in front of the potential students just to get more information about what they're about to sign up for. So highly recommend AI. 
A uh, hundred, yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a great use case. I think there's so many other use cases like that. I, again, idea generation, right? I think that's a huge one. It's a great way. Like, remember when um, you know we used to create these cluster diagrams? You draw a big circle, and then you create the keyword, right? And then from there, you do all these little lines to other bubbles where mm -hmm. you'd have them kind of break off into other ideas, and and that whole path. Well, you literally could create that and exactly like they, they, that with 50 programs, like, here's what I'm looking to do. Give me 20 ideas on this topic. And, you know, again, as we all know, with the AI, it's it, the important thing is the prompts. And so I think that is something that, um, you know, continues to evolve and improve. And so you've got to know what you're asking and you've got to be very specific. You've got to be very clear about it. Um, but man, from an idea generation and the time savings on that side, it's huge. huge. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Uh, one of our friends always says to treat JGPT like you would uh, an intern, for example, you've got to be very specific. You're going to give it a prompt. Then it comes back with the answer. And then if you don't like it, you, you give additional information of what you like changed. Right. Yeah. It's not one off. You don't give one prompt and then either accept what it spits out or reject it and just walk away. So you got to work with the tool uh, in order to get what you want out of it. Yeah, and um, absolutely. That's that's 100 percent. And then like you're going to obviously have people who are going to be lazy with it. But I, I, again, I think quality will obviously prevail. Um, and that's going to continue to be consistency and quality um, are going to be the two key things. And so, yeah. yeah. Quality over quantity. hundred percent. Especially through the commoditization of content that's happening now. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And you can still generate very high quality utilizing AI, but you have to be involved with it. You have to, right? You have to be a part of it. It's just another tool. Yes. As we bring the episode to a close, what advice would you give a higher ed marketer who's just starting out or just focusing on the student journey and KPI tracking to improve their enrollment? One piece of advice. Yeah, I would say go through, like go through the process. Pretend you're a student, go through the process get the get the um, pamphlet in the mail fill out the lead form talk to admissions not only that but i always say do it for your own institution and then do it for two others feel those different experiences and then that it's a huge huge way to get a really good idea of what you do well and how you're differentiated that's the number one thing I tell, like any of these, uh, you know, when it, we go into an institution, we, we start to work with the marketers. I say, have you gone through your sales or your enrollment process? Have you done that? And a lot of times it's like, well, I filled out a lead form. I said, okay, what did you do after that? Did you continue to engage with the emails? Did you connect with admissions? Did you go through that process? That's the number one advice I would say right now is especially for any new marketers in higher ed go through that process um, for your institution and then also to others. Um, and I think you'll be pretty amazed what you'll learn and that'll teach you everything you need to know about, you know, your institution and, um, you know, different experiences that are out there and then start asking questions. Why, why are we doing this? Why is this like this? Um, and then um, start to look the, at the data behind it. I think that's where it all kind of comes together. It's it's just so much fun when you can do that. So how can people get in touch with you to learn more about you or the, the work that you do? Yeah, just rgiconsulting.net. Um, that's our site. And then Rustam Irani on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out if there's a way I can ever help. Uh, happy to, again, going back to what you said, right? We're a community to help each other. Um, I believe in co-opetition, not competition, right? Um, and so that's what it's all about, kind of um, making every institution uh, as 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 great as it could it could be. Um, so it's really fun, really fun to be a part of this. Awesome, Rustam. I'll make sure I'll tag you in the recap of this episode so people can find you, get in touch with you, and connect with you. I highly recommend everybody connecting with Rustam. Rustam, thank you for being part of the show today. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. 
Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to the show today. If you enjoyed it, don't keep it to yourself. Share with your friends and your network. And if you have a moment, I would really appreciate a review of the podcast. That'll help other people find the show as well. Tune in every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. when I release another episode. Take care now. Have a good one, friends.